This, in this session, I will uh, report our progress of ODF and the LibreOffice migration in Taiwan. Yeah, I say report again because last year in LibreOffice conference last year, that's my first time to tell two successful stories in Taiwan which fully migrated LibreOffice. One is the Elan County, and another is the enterprise. Okay. Uh, after after the presentation this year, some something amazing. I called it a chain reaction. Started first. A community friend mailed me that. There are several people discussing the Taiwan status on the internet. This Reddit is a forum, right? And I saw that, yes, yeah, there are really many, many people discussing about this. And then there are several bloggers writing articles about this. This, this one is from Kupa, and I'm really very surprised. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. It's, it's very important, really, really. I will tell you them. Yeah, very important. Your, your, your report is very important because this reaction, I collect all these discussion and the bloggers, the URLs, and then I report that to our officers. The NDC is the main unit that responsible for the migration in our central government. And I collect all the progress and all the discussions and uh, report to, happily report, really happily. Happy is that, tell, tell the officer that, good news, sir. Now the whole world knows Taiwan is migrating to ODF and Liberal Office. Okay, and uh, our officer, yeah, I'm, I think he must have cursed me that time because you know people working in the government, especially in Taiwan, they are always very afraid of being they failed. And uh, I believe that if I didn't do this, telling that the whole world now knows Taiwan is migrating, they will have some space going back, but. I did that because you wrote the, those bloggers and I collected them to report to our officers. He will find, he will find that, what? Now the whole world knows and we have no, no, no way to go back. So, so I really, the NDG start to ask for the local governments. Ask them for, please? Some new proposals about how to adopt and migrate LibreOffice. They, they actually they didn't mention LibreOffice. They always mention ODF. But they, they say that including the editors that could edit standard ODF. And they, they also mentioned that the editors must be free. <laughs> so it all, at the start, they exclude Microsoft. Yes. So, that's our current status. First, the Eden County, that's the, the, the topic we, I, I report last year. They started last year and now they are fully migrated. I mean fully migrated because every computer installed LibreOffice and every file they send out is fully, uh, except PDF files, they are fully ODF files, 100%. And if they meet, if they have the, 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 the status that the, uh, some government will ask them to send DOC instead, or DOCX instead, they will tell them that no, you cannot re reject my ODF file. ODF is our national standard. Now they are very confident about this. They are very confident about using LibreOffice and ODF. Okay, then this year, from this year, 
I am now responsible for migrate the liberal office and ODF in Xinzhou County, Yunlin, Pindong, and uh, Jiayi City. That's, uh, that's the city government level. The whole city government or the whole county government, this level, they, they, we start to communicate and we start to training. Yeah, I, I'm responsible for the four city and for the Xinzhou city and the Taoyuan city. That's low, uh, only partial departments. For the Taoyuan, the tax department asks us to give them migration and the training. And in the Xinzhou city, it's even more interesting. It's the police department uh, connect with me and ask, uh, ask us to give them training course. Yes. And of course, for each, each city and the county, I res I, I, I'm responsible for the migration. I will always have the communication phase. That is, I will have an um, explanation session first before all the training course and the, to the people in the government. And uh, for the Hualien and the Penghu, that's another training school responsible for the, the liberal office training. Yeah. And uh, for the others, yeah, I, I, I haven't. I haven't heard any news about the ODF migration. That's a local, cover, local government. And uh, as for the central government, uh, it's a lot more slower. That's, uh, that, 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 uh, that's no surprise. But very interesting is the Ministry of Finance. The Ministry of Finance, you see three green blocks, right? Actually, they migrated to the open office in the office and the ODF earlier, very early. Maybe in this, okay, we have, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, we have a uh, uh, friend sitting there and who works in the information center, right? So, you're just saying everything about the time of 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 the time I, I become a witness of <laughs> open, uh, open source introduction. So uh, before, it happened before I, came, I, I went there. So it's in 2011, uh, we adopted open office. Then later maybe uh, around 2000, uh, end of uh, 2014, we uh, evaluated LibreOffice, then migrated to uh, LibreOffice uh, in, 2015. Yeah. So uh, the range well, we introduced uh, extended from the Fiscal Information and Financial Taxation Bureau and extend to the uh, whole Ministry of Finance. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, for the Ministry of Finance, oh, at least we have these units that's fully migrated. And for the preparing to go, what I mean is the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, they started to ask us questions like, uh, is liberal office, uh, how about the security issue about liberal office? Uh, how, many, how, how much money will, will it cost to my wife ask us such questions? But not really started yet, okay. That's our progress now. But the most important in this talk is this, our communication phase. In our communication phase, I will always hold explanation sessions in many, many places. I have already maybe more than 30 or 40 sessions everywhere in Taiwan. Uh, the smallest may be only 15 or 20 person but the large can be to 400 or 500 person. Yeah. And uh, we tell people about why we should use ODF, but the, the topic about ODF, not the liberal office. And we use three different aspects to make people to think about. The first is we compare between ODF and OOXML. We didn't compare between LibreOffice and Microsoft Office. We compare between ODF and OSML. 
we let people assume that, okay, assume we are now using the old XML as our national standard. What will happen? Okay, then I tell them, in this graph, of course, the file format is bound to the software. So if we choose OSML, we must review the software we are using now, right? So we, we tell them the, the earliest version is Office 3.0, and then up to 2003, 7, 10, 13, and 16. But here, in this graph, I mark 13 and 16 as red. Why? Because these two versions cannot run on Windows XP. It is a very serious problem because there are still many government, school, even enterprises still using Windows XP. That's true, that's true, okay. The second problem here, I have a line. This is about current timeline, current moment. I, I ask the people that if we choose all XML as our national standard, then we must have, we must unite the same version of the software we use. Is that correct? Of course, because if you generate a file from Open Office, uh, from the Microsoft Office 2013, can you open it using Office 2007? No, but we still have many users use, using 2003, 2007, 2010, 2013. Yeah, so if we want to use OSM as our national standard, we must unite the versions everyone use, or it cannot exchange, right? The people who are rich, they can have Office 2013 or 16, but the file they generate, cannot be opened by other people using 2003. That's a problem, that's a serious problem about if you are using, a, you, know, if you, are, you need to exchange the documents. So at the moment, what version should we use? Assume currently we are still using all SML as our standard, what version should we use? Then I will ask people, okay, if you think 2003, please raise your hand. Okay, these people raise your hand you are kidding because 2003 are even cannot open all XML, right? Okay, so I will ask everyone, then they will find that for those who raised for 2013 and 2016, I will ask them, so what, is, what should we do for those people still using without XP? Right, that's the problem. And the second, okay, now assume we everyone use Office 2013, then now 2016 is coming out, and 2019 may come out, maybe coming out. Do you need to change that time? And what if Microsoft decide to raise their price? What can we do? I made people think about this. Do we have another choice? Okay, they will find that, okay. I tell people that, okay, using OSML as our standard, for users, maybe you don't need to change your habit, you don't need to change your software, you don't change, you are happy, but for the government, for the country, it is a serious problem, because we cannot unite the version, we cannot, we have no enough budget to even upgrade, if we want to upgrade to 2013, we even need to upgrade the operating system or even the hardware. How much budget do we need? Okay, we made, made, made people to think about this. That's the first aspect. The second aspect is to tell them that why we should use open standard. What will happen if we use a proprietary format or even open standard format, but it's joined up by a single commercial comment? I used uh, an example from one of my friends who is an artist. Uh, my, uh, this friend, he, 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 he is good at, at drawing, and now, now he is responsible, uh, mainly use 
draw the 3D graphics, 3D graphics. And he used to use the uh, software name, name soft image by Autodesk, right? He used that software for five or six years and create many artwork. And sometimes for, uh, for some project to earn money and sometimes his own creative artwork. But until one day, Autodesk decided to close this application just for the company policy. Then he had, he had a serious problem. If his current so image is gone, is, is his current computer is down or broken or anything, he will no way to open his creative artwork anymore. For an artist, it is a problem that all his creative artworks is zizzled just because he couldn't open the file anymore. So the friend started to promote open standard because he knows that open standard file is the only solution to this problem. Okay, we use this example to make people think that, yes, we need to use open standard, especially not by a single, oh, 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 oh. sorry, not by a single commercial company. Because if even an open spec format by a single commercial company, they can change any anytime they want, right? Any other software, yes, op the spec is open, but when I, when I create the software to read the file, they can change that anytime they want to make your software not work any again. Yeah. Okay, the third aspect is about the international trends. That's, a, uh, okay, mostly United Kingdom, Netherlands, Hung Hungary. Yes, but this one is the, as the most important one, I think. The example of Sweden. The National Pro <coughs> Pro Procurement Service, or NPS, in Sweden, suggested 40, this happens in the March this year, right? Suggest 46 IT open standards include ODF, HTML5, and SVG, and so on. And I tell people that, okay, the news is here, but there's one thing he didn't say. OOXML is not in the list. Why? I made people think, why? They are just suggest open standards that can be used by the government, right? Of course, they can include the OOSML. It's just suggestions. It's not a force to push specific formats. Of course, they can include OOSML, but why did they exclude OOSML? I tell people that I, I, I haven't contacted with Sweden government yet, but I believe the reason should be the same as why United Kingdom select ODF as the center, and why Italy defense, and why Netherlands and why Taiwan select ODF instead of all SML. That means using ODF as standard is not a policy that's only because we want to save budget. It's not a policy that we only want to save budget. It must have more important reasons to exclude all XML and use ODF. We make people think about that. It's not a policy that we just want to annoy people and feel happy. You know, they will they will always feel annoyed when they need to learn a new thing when they need to use LibreOffice instead. But I tell them that, no, it's not a policy that just we want you to save the budget. No, it's more important about why we need to use ODF and why Sweden decide to exclude all SML. That's the same thing. That's the same thing. That's the same reason. So it's a very important point for us to tell people. And the people here, uh, when I speak, uh, when I uh, in my speech to here, they will start to 
not. Oh, yes. It, it's true. And, uh, okay, it seems that ODF seems to be ah, not, not a policy that they, uh, they imagine that such a bad policy just to annoy them. They will start it not. Okay. Then finally, I will talk about the attitude. The attitude about when we face problems, what attitude should we have? Not the way to solve those problems, but the attitude we have, we need to have. Okay, because we know that people always complain and resist a lot, especially when using open source software. I don't know why, but when, they, when you want people switch from proprietary software to open source software, they always have a lot of reason, a lot of excuses. I don't know why, but okay. We may then recall some good memories. We ask them, okay, we deeply used to Windows system, but do you remember how you react when you see this? Do you remember, remember how you react? Do you decide to send the report or not? Yeah. If you decide to send the report, did Microsoft contact with you and say sorry? Did they? Okay, we always solve the problem ourselves, right? We use three keys, which three keys? Control, Alt, Delete, to solve this problem, right? But what if we see this? How you react when you see this? Control Alt delete may not may, may, may be useless. How you react? Usually, we will, will you call the Microsoft and ask them to solve the problem for you, or will you curse the Microsoft and the, and the swear that I won't use Microsoft anymore? No. That is what, what they do. The most power, the powerful button in the computer, power button, press, reboot. And what if we still see it after reboot? We will, okay, we will reinstall the Windows. We will send the computer to the vendors to fix. The whole process, I ask people that, in the whole process, what did Microsoft do for you? and how we face this problem. Didn't you decide to solve that yourself? Right? Did you swear to that, I, I won't use Microsoft anymore? No, you didn't. But why did you resist when you have problem using LibreOffice, using any open source software? We made people think about this. Okay, so that's what I mentioned in my explanation sessions, but we still have some problems about migrating. The most serious, of course, is this ODF files generated by the Microsoft. Yeah, because there, for those counties or cities that mark as blue, okay, sometimes they will send ODF files, but generated by the Microsoft Office. And we have examples that the city government generated the ODF by Microsoft 2013, but in the local village, they only have 2007. They cannot open that. Okay, or using LibreOffice to open those files, usually it will be a tragedy. So that's still the most important problem. And the, now we start to plan the solution because NDC finally realize that it is an important problem. They finally realize that. So we will, we will have a customized version, just similar to Cobra Gov Office. Yes. But we will have our local company and software developer join to develop this, to customize. And of course, in the experimentation, I highlight before Microsoft Office can follow all the audio spec and extension correctly, please, please, please don't use it to generate ODF. 
Okay. What to do next? For those counties, for the government units, local and the central, they haven't started to migrate. Of course, we need to push that. That we will collaborate with NDC to do this. And make things easier, a system-wide support, and make things easier, CC lesson tutorials, we always open and share our tutorials on the internet. Yeah, and the complete ecosystem is an important part. Because our, in Taiwan, our commercial companies or users who use join, or join uh, open source related projects, they won't feedback anything. And we, now, we are now trying to push them to feedback for example, to, for example, to feedback to the TDF. That's what I'm trying to do now. Okay, and uh, for the development, of course, we need to uh, we need to cooperate with the international community, right? And for promoting uh, for the promoting of marketing, I'm now also trying to make Taiwan join the advisory board of TDF or ODF community. Our director, yesterday I received his mail. He's interested in it. But of course, we may have some political issues to solve first, because Taiwan is in a special political uh, uh, situation, you know. Yes. OK. That's the progress this year. Thank you. <laughs>